This program is brought to you by the Forbes featured Freedom Hub Health Plan, the alternative to overpriced and restrictive insurance. The Freedom Hub Health Plan is exactly what you need. By Frequency Medicine Associates, supporting health professionals and laypersons with safe and effective advanced telemedicine like technology that can scan and help rebalance the root causes of stress and illness. By the Planet Lockdown film, which can be seen on the Freedom Hub's Rumble channel along with many great speakers. And by the Pavilion a 21st century community hub that brings together many of the disruptive innovations featured by the Freedom Hub, including direct pay healthcare, farm to table dining, TED like Freedom Hub talks, and more. Visit your mp.com forward slash pavilion solution for details. Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday, September 28th, and this is the Health Biz and Politics show, uh, free market cash patient from your Freedom Hub. And uh, before we get started, uh, I will share the, our screen with you so you can just see where our website is. And um, theoretically, there we go. So if you come over to your-mp.com and go to the homepage, uh, you click down on webinars, you will see who's coming up uh, in the next week. You will also uh, see subscriptions, sign up right here for health, business, and politics, and then also on the uh, Freedom Hub programs that we have on Thursday. Uh, and down near the bottom, we also list the channels where we are publishing everything afterwards, all the videos you can find right there. And let me stop that sharing. And I think that's it for now. Let me turn it over to Charlie to introduce our program today. Thanks, Jim. And it's a pleasure to introduce my fellow yogi, Hargobin Khalsa, whose family I know real well and whom I have known for years uh, through the Kundalini Yoga that we both practice. And for those into yoga, you probably know Kundalini as uh, that more intense variety that goes beyond the series of poses in the gym to, you know, keep some of the ancient practices from India around chanting and meditation and some real uh, innovative movements. And after I started, like most people, with the gym, the gym yoga, Iyengar, Ashtanga, you know, Kundalini really took me by storm, especially with their one day long meditation intensive called um, white tantric and then i went to, to the retreats that they um, host up in new mexico in the in the summer solstice june in the high desert and went with you know a famous yogi gurumukh in in um, los angeles hollywood she she's the one that's been teaching madonna and all those celebrities to get into the yoga um and as you know, Jim and I are in the health in health business commercially, uh, disrupting it, trying to insert more cash payment, integrated care, and natural care. And over the years, we've been hosting this four straight years. We've had a lot of disruptors of the cartel that are promoting healings that aren't always popular with the FDA or big pharma or the or the payers, but they provide healings that work and. You know, I think a lot of us agree that going deep inside, outside of yourself, outside of your daily stresses for a while is important. It's like a tune up, uh, a retreat. And in the write up for this show, we quoted the Bhagavad Gita about the importance of going on retreat. Uh, I found in research that there's some celebrities uh, in all fields, uh, actors like Tom Hanks musicians, I've mentioned Madonna, comedians, Russell Brand, and uh, business corporate uh, honchos, the Salesforce um, founder, Mark Benioff, came up with the idea on a yoga retreat. There's articles about it. In fact, he was so blown away, instead of forcing all his employees to come back into his office post-COVID hysteria, he, um, he bought some land in the forest of California to let his employees have a place to go retreat and meet 
Um, but then someone else told me, Tony Robbins came up with a million dollar biz plan on the Trans-Russian Railroad journey, which folks may know about. It crosses the whole Asian um, continent there. And, you know, I've seen Hargobin's presence on Facebook as he has started uh, not one, but two retreats, one in this beautiful home near my in-laws in Western Maryland, you know, specifically West Virginia, uh, uh, up the Potomac River, which flows down in, in the DC before flowing into the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, beautiful property, he hosts really fantastic events. And then he has a second location down near Cancun. You fly into Cancun, go south to uh, a Mayan ruin, Tulum. Um, and, but it's not just about retreats, you know, he really wants to be creative in these retreats. And I think people before they'll uh, bite, they'll, uh, they'll do it. They want to have some really good insights on, you know, what is this retreat thing all about? How important is it? How creative can we be on making them exciting and, and interesting? I think all of us are kind of bored of the usual conference with breakouts and speakers. We, we want better events, period. And then uh, Hargovin wrote a book, Dharmify, about his life because he wasn't just always this pure yogi. He's a real entrepreneur. And uh, he's, he's, he's pushed the envelope on behavior, trying to you know, be, be funny and be fun. And that, that's why he's popular. He attracts a lot of attention. So Hargovin, why don't you take it away from there? And then we'll come back with Q&A when you're done. You're muted. You're muted. I'm sorry about that. Um, a pleasure, pleasure to be with you, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks, thanks you guys for um, for for taking the time uh, to to be with me. So um, the um, where to start? Uh, it's a good it's a good introduction, and uh, I like I like uh, the reference to the to the to the behavior. Um, because I most definitely uh, am not like a pure yogi. Uh, maybe I am now, but but it's been a wild ride, uh, I think, to sort of arrive here. Um, what was, I think, sort of fascinating about how I was raised is I grew up in an ashram. And an ashram is like, <laughs> we joke it's like a trailer park for yogis. <laughs> it's like what happens when a bunch of poor yoga people get together and start a little community. And so I grew up in that community and there was always lots of people around um, and, and, and it was very communal in, in a lot of ways. Uh, then I went to India when I was 12 and I went to boarding school and boarding school in India was definitely one of the most adventurous and exciting times of my life. And I was living with about a hundred other people and we would have our meals together and we would go on trips together and we would, uh, you know, explore all of these like fascinating cultural sites uh, all through North India and even in, into South India. When I came back from there, I came back to the United States and all of a sudden I was in this very suburban lifestyle where, where I was isolated. I didn't have friends. Culturally, I was completely an alien being, you know, this American white skinned kid with a turban on who was very culturally influenced by India at the age of 17. Then I'm going to college and trying to figure out who I am, you know, while everyone else is, you know, leaving home for the first time and, and just very lost in, in so many ways. What, what that boiled down to for me was I realized I was very much missing community and I was very much missing these communal structures that I grew up with that promoted health. We would work out together. We did calisthenics. We did uh, a Sikh martial art called gutka. We did yoga. We did meditation. And in the back of my mind, I, I, I was thinking, there's something wrong with my life. What is it? And then just being the entrepreneurial thinker that I was, I, I realized well, how could I have a positive impact? How could I give back? How could I create something? And also how could I make money doing this because I needed to live? And so all of these kind of cultural influences 
really tuned me in to the fundamental need, especially in American society, but really most of Western society, of the need to heal from the drastic alienation that that and polarization that that our politics and our business and our suburban lifestyle uh, and and kind of poor city planning leads to. And and that's really what I've built my businesses on is solving this problem in a very very micro way in in that I sell my properties sort of like an Airbnb format um, to yoga studios and then yoga studios come and they bring their people and I do their maid service and I do their food and I do their hosting and it's a chance for people to come together and 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 really live the way that I think humans were always supposed to live, which was not necessarily in the nuclear family, but in these extended strong communal bonds where we look after each other, we know who our neighbors are, we, we have friends, we have great healthy relationships, our kids have friends. And, and so my yoga retreat properties were this microcosm of the solution to what I see as the, the huge amount of alien, alienization um, and separation that, 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 that has happened in, in American society. Um, how's that for a, for a little brief introduction? Um, I can go a couple different directions, but um, maybe yeah. just tell me if you're entertained. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's <laughs> great. You know, I'm right. I'm taking notes for Q and A. So I'll definitely keep it going if you run out of uh, ideas, but uh, you know, Tell us about your your retreat experience with these uh, Airbnb customers and where you want to go next. So um, I have two things that I do is I lead I lead about eight or 10 of my own retreats. And so anywhere from 10 to 25 people, they'll come and I run retreats for them. And I teach Kundalini, as you mentioned. I also teach Bikram. I teach uh, Vinyasa. I teach meditation. Uh, I teach a calisthenics class, um, and then and then I teach I teach my Dharmify method, which is which is a a, a process of of um, it's really a journal. It's a journal technique, and I I can go into that um, in a second. And then uh, it's an all inclusive experience. There's always nature uh, here in West Virginia. We actually have a cave on the property. Uh, it's a kind of an ancient famous cave. Uh, and so we, we take people, uh, just like the, the yogis in the cave, um, practice, uh, we take them down for some meditation. We have hiking. Uh, this property is actually 63 acres. It's about 12,000 square feet has a pool, hot tub, um, building steps to the river. Actually right now it overlooks the Potomac river. It's, it's, it's kind of an Epic, um, set up. And then in Mexico, it's a similar similar thing. Um, it's a 12-bedroom property. Uh, and then we offer an all-inclusive experience uh, there. So people that come to us are, are really, um, again, like the vacation, like the way Americans vacation to me is insane. Like it, it's, again, that isolating experience where you go somewhere and have people wait on you to me never made sense. The way that I always love to travel and to experience new things is to go somewhere and have someone who's knowledgeable curate a special experience for me. And that's what I try to do in my properties where whoever's coming, I kind of try to tune into what do they like to eat? What do they like to do? What are their relationship challenges? What are their business challenges? What are their health challenges? And then try to customize our, our retreat to really, you know, hopefully improve their lives and and have a positive impact on them. If especially if you only have two weeks or three weeks worth of vacation, you you really got to make this good um, because you don't you don't get a lot of it. So, um, yeah, how's that? What direction you want me to go in now? Um, Dharmify your book. So, how do you incorporate that in that list? You said you teach it. You said preach Bikram and Yasa meditation the cave sounds cool um yeah. and so dharmify in your whole book yeah so um can we do can we do a little dharmify can we can we get a pen and paper would that be would you all be open to that um, i've got pen and paper 
So go. All right. Let's rock and roll. Okay. So um, can I share a slide? Can I, can I be the host? I think Jim can make you a, a host, a co-host. You should see the share screen button there at your controls, your Zoom controls. Excellent. Okay. So now I'm host. And all right. Okay. So this is a um, this is a method. And Dharmify kind of, it was a process of um, two things. I was actually a barista at Starbucks. And um, I was like one of those guys in the little green aprons that make you your coffee. And I was very enthusiastic and uh, I, I loved being a barista. And um, I, I got into this kind of argument with my manager and her name was Jody. And I told Jody, I said, you know, these mochas that you guys are selling are, are full of too much sugar. And I think you should do two pumps of mocha instead of the three pumps of mocha. And Jody, she was this cool Palestinian lady. And she like looks at me sideways and she says, Hargobin, we don't really care what you think. She said, we have a method. We have a process. And we build a system based on the process to solve this problem of delivering a consistent product. And I was like, you know, millennial self, like someone doesn't care about my opinion. I'm shocked. And, and but it, I filed it away that the most important areas of, or, uh, uh, or, or that big things are built through consistent method. Right around this same time, my, my mother was dying of cancer. And um, I remember, I remember like sitting there with her, like we were super tight. She was a super cool lady. And, um, and, and, you know, we went to the funeral and we had this cool group of people come up, come around us and like uh, she had breast cancer and, and it kind of moved pretty quick. And I remember sitting back and, and like, uh, like as the process unfolded, I was like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? And she's gone. And then like, that was the world was like being with her. And then all of a sudden you're just kind of lost in the middle of the ocean because she was a foundational, you know, person for me. And right around that same time, I, I was I, like, I was thinking about Jody, and she was like, there's methods. And, and I thought, huh, shouldn't the most important areas of our lives have methods too? How are we going to heal? How are we going to go through divorce? How are we going to build our business? How are we going to choose who we want to, you know, partner up with? And so, so I, I, I was, uh, I borrowed a lot of this stuff from yoga philosophy, and then I turned it into a, into a method um, that we'll go through real quick. So it's extra more fun and more, more powerful if you have something that's on your mind, either a health issue, a business issue, or a relationship issue. And, and it'll give you some guidance of, of how to be methodical and how you, how you handle your business. Um, so there's seven components to it, okay? Soul, karma, dharma, I'll explain these. Vision, chop wood, carry water, napkin financials, and what I call Guru's blessing. And, and, and these all come from different yoga, uh, yoga philosophy ideas and, and Sikh philosophy stuff. Okay. Um, so I was a barista. That's my mom. She was cool. Uh, okay. So step number one is soul. And I think that the most important thing is to always start with how we're feeling. And so when we notice how we're feeling about our relationship, about our, our entrepreneurial struggles, or we notice how we feel about our gut instincts in regards to, mm, maybe I'm not taking such good care of myself, you write that down into your book. Okay, so you just answer these two things. And it could be as simple as like, how do you feel right now? Are you anxious? Are you excited? Are you bored? Are you interested? And then you just put that right down into your book, like a list. Okay, so that's your first assignment is how do you feel and how do you want to feel? And, and you want got to, and you want to write this down, right? How yeah, you feel? Write this, yeah, write this part down. Anyone have an issue that they can share with us? It'll be more fun. Just to put you on the spot. 
<clears throat> yeah, well, I've got to get all these certifications done for the insurance world, and I feel really overwhelmed. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. How, yeah. Excellent, Lou. Okay. I'll just add that I, you know, I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm in a pretty good state with my habits uh, and I just need to be, go bolder with my consistency to bring in more reward from um, the big guy. Yeah, right on. Going back to Lou, how do you want to feel? Okay, so if you feel overwhelmed, how do you want to feel? Because that's also an, a very important soul motivation. I, I want to feel at ease. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next step. Okay, karma. Okay, and I, I always I always think about karma in regards to this William Faulkner quote, which goes, the past is never dead, it's not even past. So literally, we're walking into this webinar where we're here together right now, carrying these devil and angel experiences, these good and bad things that have happened to us. And so Lou already indicated he, he's got so much work on his plate, which is stressing him out. Okay, so that's his karma. Okay, that's what he's showing up with here. And so already you can kind of see how karma and soul interact is that he's feeling a certain way because of certain things that happened to him in the past. And so in his case, it's super simple is he's just going to put down, he's buried in work. Okay. But perhaps there's more, perhaps there's an employee that's screwing him over. Perhaps there's someone else who's you know, not fulfilling their obligations. Perhaps he bit off more than he can chew. Forgive me, Lou, for speculating, but just it gives us it gives us a chance to kind of understand the method here. And so when we look at our karma, when we look to our past and deeply understand what happens, my argument to you is you have so much leverage over your future. When you ignore your karma, when you don't deal with your problems, then the opposite is true, where your karma is controlling you uh, in an even greater way. Obviously, we don't control our past, we don't control our future, but we certainly learn our wisdom and lessons from our past, and then we can use it as leverage to create the most positive future that we can. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. I love, I love the Faulkner quote. Can can we can we put down can we put down our karma in regards to whatever whatever uh, caused us to feel the way we feel? Can we go to step three? Yep. Okay. So karma is what happened to make you feel this way. Dharma, okay? Um, dharma comes from Bhagavad Gita, as you quoted, but it also shows up in, in Buddhism. It also shows up in Sikhism, and they don't agree with each other. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite observations of dharma, is it, 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 our dharma can be what, what, what we declare, okay? So our path forward is what, is what we declare. And it can line up with other people's ideas or not. But basically, Dharma includes duties, rights, laws, conduct, virtues, and then really the right way of living. My argument to you is that the right way of living is soul plus karma. Okay? That when you add how you feel to solve the problems, you get your best path forward. So simple equation, soul plus karma equals Dharma. So the right way forward in really any of your choices is soul plus karma, is acknowledging this is how I feel, this is how I want to feel, this is the problem that I've got to solve, and that equals my right solution. And so in the case of Lou, where he's, he's, feeling, he's feeling overwhelmed and burnt, he, he wants to feel at ease, then he, he's got some karma, he's got some karma with his workload. And so how we deal with the workload will, will be illuminated now doesn't mean he can solve his problem. It doesn't. But this, this puts him firmly in control of what he can do versus overstressing what he cannot do. Does, it, does this make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So here's, here's a, 
here's, here's how I do Dharma. Okay. So what I write down is my Dharma is to solve blank because blank. Okay. So my Dharma is to solve karma because soul. He wants to be at ease. He doesn't want to be in a stressed out position, but there's some type of karma that's creating his stress for him. And so perhaps he can't solve it. And so then Dharma would just be to flex his, you know, go on vacation, <laughs> shut the business down. There's so many directions that he can go in, but this starts to then, you, we all wake up in the morning with 16 hours a day uh, of, of, of open eyes. And then, so what are we going to do here? If this, we could have dharmified anything, we could have gone in any direction, but this was the thing that became most meaningful because this was influencing how we feel. And so then we start to get these bold statements that start to put us in control of, of some level of what's going on. Um, does anyone have a dharma that they can share? And no right answers, okay? Especially, here's the thing is, I, I practice this, I do this probably three times a week, where I'm just like writing out, okay, this is how I feel, this is what's going on, this is what my dharma is. And, and so there's no perfect, there's no right answers here. It really is just a journal practice for self-reflection. Uh, what do you guys got? I can share something. Um... Ever since I think I was three years old, uh, I came here. I said, "There's something wrong with this place. <laughs> it's it's out of it's out of balance, you know." And and that has been my journey, regardless of my different careers and everything. It's to apply myself to help figure out the root issues underlying this imbalance and and help bring it back to restore balance, wholeness, that sort of thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. And it'll get even more. Yeah. I love it as a guiding principle. It's going to get even more practical in the next few steps. Thanks for sharing that. Lou, do you have a Dharma just out of curiosity? Um, uh, I'm not really sure if I have a Dharma. So I know that I, uh, as I stated, I have a lot of things on my plate that I need to accomplish, and uh, and I and that's kind of been <laughs> I, that's kind of been my mo. I mean, I, I I get myself involved in more things than I should with uh, with uh, social activities and business activities and and um, and then just uh, family activities. So when you put all that together, it's uh, a lot going on. I've got meetings tonight. I've got meetings tomorrow, and I got to get this work done. So, uh, so that's what that's what I'm at now. So, can I just put something out there? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, the Dharma gets so good because it's a great way to say no. If all of a sudden you have your little philosophy that says, "I'm only going to say yes to extremely good things." some criteria it's a great way to sort of have because because we all get overwhelmed like you know especially you seem like a super nice guy <laughs> and and nice people end up getting so much stuff you know dumped on them so this can be a great way to be like uh, going back to soul where you're feeling some anxiety and you want to feel at ease if that is a motivating factor for you then dharma can be to say no to a lot more things um and, you know, that'll, that'll put you through different set of feelings of anxiety and, you know, feeling like, mm, I really do want to help with that social cause. But, but this, this will give you sort of a method, at least to put some boundaries on, on, on your time. Um, that's how I use it. Um, because, I, I, it, yeah, I, I found myself kind of saying yes to too many things and then not doing some of them well. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um let's go to the next step okay okay so dharma examples could be like heal open the business don't open the business run a marathon it's great for goal setting um okay step number four is drishti okay so in the yoga practice uh we well, we call it vision but it's that upon which the eyes are set uh i love this little helen keller quote of i'd rather be blind than have no vision uh, in yoga, we often talk, uh, one of my teachers used to say, without, without drishti, without vision, there's no pose. And, and so when we start to declare dharma, 
uh, it triggers vision. It's starting, it's starting to go from the past to the future. And so in our, in our fourth step, we just write down, all right, if I'm going to, if I'm going to um, start saying no to more things, what's that going to look like? What kind of time is that going to open up? And it could be a day, it could be a month, it could be a year, but some level of, of the future that, that we start to see, okay, this is the vision that I'm creating. And uh, I think of vision almost like a bicep or a muscle that we start to flex, where once we can start to look into the future and we're taking the time to understand karma and soul, we can vastly improve our ability to create things. To And, and, and that's some of the most rewarding uh, things about being alive is, is the ability to see nothing create something and then, and then, uh, you know, utilize the, the fruits of our, of our labor. Um, can we do vision? Is that, is that clear? Um, the simplest way to do it is like take a time frame and then look back. Um, and then how does that vision look for you? If you follow, if you follow this Dharma and you follow this right way forward, am I making sense? Can I try? Yeah, please. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I'm envisioning from your presentation of Drishti is kind of a goal, goal setting and envisioning the goal. So what I see is, uh, you know, kind of dealing with Jim's uh, question of whether there's an imbalance in the, in the universe. And I'm trying to improve health payment to create all these empowered patients and lobby for uh, freedom and bodily autonomy and your choices in healthcare. So my vision is a pretty wide open market of healers and healed people who are doing great things. Pretty vague, I know. Uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, it's great. My... It, it's, it's great. And then all of a sudden in the next step, it's gonna get super real, okay? Because oftentimes we're setting such big vision but we can't get the steps there to take to to take it, and so the next step will drastically tighten up your vision, and because you've got a lot of good things there, but that's big, and and oftentimes if we have such big vision, it kind of crushes us because because we're we're chasing a, a ghost so to speak, and I'm not saying this is a ghost. I'm just saying that's super big, and it'll get clear in the next step whether it's too big and we need to make it smaller and more more reachable or or if it's just you know you're doing big things and 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 it's 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 going to it's going to happen um so at this stage we use very much our imagination very much our creativity and the next step we you know we roll up our sleeves and we start pounding pounding the pavement is that does that make sense Charlie um yeah i'm afraid of the of the smaller vision making me go out and do work <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. This is this is the problem, my brother. This is this is the problem. Here's the thing, though. We want vision. Okay, so the next step is what I call chop wood and carry water. Okay, it's very practical. But really, my basic argument to you with Dharmify is that we want vision to equal chop wood and carry water. And chop wood and carry water is basically just the work that we're going to put in to build our retreat center, to write our book, to do what we intend to go out and do. Um, and so when vision is here, but the, but the investment is here, uh, pain, massive amounts of pain, but we'll, we'll get into that. Anybody else stuck on vision? Um, I can't see your name at the bottom, but you looked like you were thinking. Um, I guess we're all in different, uh, I think it was Sarah. Um, I, you seemed like you had big thoughts, Sarah. Do you wanna share um, any of them? No, okay. <laughs> Come on, Sarah. Sometimes that's the best move, Sarah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to pay for this. Uh, well, you're invited. You're, you're, you're invited to share. Um, okay. Can we go to the next step? And vision will make sense a little bit more here. And so what, what I love about even what you said at the beginning, Lou, is you didn't want to feel like you wanted to feel at ease. So that's also a vision is like, oh, like I want to be at ease. Okay. Well, well, how do we get there? It's in the next step, okay? Um, okay, so step number five is chop wood and carry water. 
And this comes from a Zen cone. And it says before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. And so what I love about framing, even like our goals like this, even though this can be used for more than goals, is that the path is the goal is that the type of work and energy and and and, and, and effort that we put into something um, is uh, exactly what's leading to Dharma. And it's exactly what's leading to our right way and, and fulfillment of our vision. So uh, like in, in, in Charles's perspective, uh, in his example, you know, he's talking about uh, massive transformation of the healthcare industry. All right, so what do we have to do? Like literally today, what do we do today to, to, to help make that vision real? Because the last thing we ever want to do is start be putting out a vision that, that we can't attain. And that's, in my view, what leads to depression and anxiety and, you know, really amazing people um, feeling bad about themselves because they have such high vision and such high expectations and put so much pressure on themselves that, 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 that you could never possibly live up to it. And so what's great about chop wood, carry water is it helps us moderate, like drop down our vision to, to just the efforts that we're going to put in. So things start to get extremely practical. And what we've done here is we've gone from very spiritual with soul and karma. And now all of a sudden we're just, we're just coming down to a task list of what are we going to do today? And that becomes what we do today. Um, Anybody have any examples they can share with us? Well, I'll start if you want. Yeah, please. Since I'm the co-host, I should, you know, make myself the, the guinea pig here. Um, despite my unrealistic uh, vision, um, I do think that I do have practical uh, water and woodwork going on at least in terms of my webinars, which I host yeah. twice a week. Uh, so, so at least I am partnering with fellow disruptors every week, both Amazing. in healthcare on this Wednesday and broader issues yeah. on the Thursday issue. And directly that makes connections. And then the LinkedIn, I have, you know, networking going on. But as far as your depression comment or anxiety, yeah, there's always more one could do, but to offset that, I, I have my yoga practice. So, you know, I don't Beautiful. stress too much about not doing as much as I probably should be doing. Yeah, fantastic. Um, to me, like where I've come to with my work is, is that if I'm doing much upward carry water, I was like, that's enough. Like I'm doing enough. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm chasing my vision I'm chasing my vision and that's enough. And, and I think for a lot of, especially highly motivated overachievers, they're never enough. <laughs> and so for me in setting, in setting up the method this way, uh, it, it just put me at so much more ease and sort of contentment that even if I was chasing something that's a four-year project, five-year project, that, that at least, uh, you know, it gave me a chance to just, to just, chop wood and carry water and be content with it and that and, and that it's enough so i i um yeah i i hope i hope you find i hope you find that contentment through your work um because I, it sounds like you are doing your thing like you're not you know you're not not doing it so um that 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 often can just be helpful at, at least for me yeah um, can any, i jump in a second yeah please all right yeah i i just want to say i think charlie uh is a good is a great example. I mean, you know, you're the health freedom, uh, and we're on similar paths. And these are big issues that maybe won't get solved, you know, but but I, I shouldn't say that because there are solutions along the way, you know, they're like micro solutions, and they build on each other. So I think um, while we we tend to get frustrated, I know I do, I'm on a 12 year project. Uh -huh. uh, but the same idea, it you know, we're making little strides, but I love, and um, I love the comment, the, uh, the line there, the path is the goal. You know, I think in a sense that does help for me, uh, I will keep that in mind. I kind of know that, but it's good to see it that just let it flow and, you know, everything is going to work the way it's supposed to work. 
Yeah, you, you, you guys are on 10, 20 year, 30 year lifetime type of, you know, disruption and change. And I, I think, you know, to sustain that level of, of energy over time, you have to keep coming back to soul and you have to keep coming back to karma. And, you, you know, if soul and karma changes, you know, then, then, then your direction changes and um, yeah. So, so uh, more power, more power to you guys. Um, I love your quotes. Step. Your quotes yeah. are so awesome for these um, points. Cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Okay, so what tax do you have to do to make it happen? Um, okay, number six is napkin financials, okay? So we've started out in a very spiritual realm with soul and karma. We came to the right path, which is just an internal process. We started to create vision for the future. We started to make investments of our energy and our, and our time. Um, my argument to you is to turbocharge dharma, you have to invest your resources in it that literally you need to put your money where your mouth is because each of us every single day is paying rent, paying food, consuming resources. The craziest thing I've ever heard is for people to be consuming resources, but not dedicating them to the most important areas of their lives. Of all of the things that you could have said, you said you wanted to feel at ease. My argument to you is, Spend some money on it. Throw your resources, that your hard-earned resources, into the direction of your soul to solve your karma. And my argument to you is that when you're not committing your resources, when you're not using your resources on the things that are most important, guess what? You're using them on the things that aren't important. <laughs> and that's stupid. <laughs> so when we talk about these intractable problems, Committing our resources is one of the best ways to turbocharge the direction of our efforts. Am I making any sense? Two Give years, ago, two years ago, I was retired. <laughs> and, you know, and I wasn't doing anything. You know, it was during the, uh, the pandemic and, you know, and, and, and I got bored. And I, so I, I got the paintbrush out and painted my whole basement and painted the floors and, you know, and, uh, and, and I got the painting done and I did the yard work and I got that done. I thought, you know what, I got to do something. I just can't sit here. And uh, so I went, I grew up in retail. I actually had my own furniture store for years and, and closed it a few years ago. And so I went to work for a, <laughs> for a lumber supply company, designing kitchens and selling appliances. Nice. And I did that for seven months. And I did it for fun. You know, I wasn't really doing it for the money. I just want to get out of the house and do something. Well, every time I sold an appliance or <laughs> washer, refrigerator, dryer, I've got to go up and get it out of the stock room and put it down into the pickup area. And I said, you know what? Get the young guys to do this. I'm more valuable to you on this floor than I am up in that stock room. And now that's the way we, the Menards, that's, that's the way we do it. So I said, well, okay. So I, I went ahead and, you know, and, and uh, put my notice in, but I, but I left on good terms. I, I enjoyed the part of the job of, of working with, with people. And uh, so now I'm back to, what am I going to do? I, I'm not going to sit here. And uh, then, you know, I had already had a health share because I, I was uh, dealing with, uh, with the high cost of insurance a, a few years ago. And, and HSA for America, who I'm affiliated with now, and they sent me the, uh, <clears throat> he sent me, a, Wally sent me a, an email asking if there's anybody can join your, our team, would you refer them to us? And and so I referred myself to them. So, <laughs> but uh, but I, I think I, I think I jump into the frying pan purposely, and and I, and 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 I do put myself into a lot of. Uh, I'm going to be the president of the Rotary Club, so I'm involved with that and um, active with the Chamber of Commerce. And then I have another business that I uh, manage, a shopping plaza. And I'm doing all these things. And then I'm looking at, I've got 980 emails that I have, and half of them I haven't opened yet. I don't think they're important, but one of uh, Wiley's people think it is, and she's on me all the time about purging those emails. And then, so that's another level of stress. So I, I guess, you know, I, I guess I just need to, Take one step at a time, do what I can do, and then if you know what's important most, and then move on. And I, you know, so I guess that's probably the the uh, chop wood and, and carry water in my situation. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, and I don't know how I'm going to invest any, any more time or money or anything into this because I'm, uh, I'm pretty much maxed out. There's a few different things that pop out for me in your case with Soul, with Napkin Financials. I, I think, um, you know, I think even coming back to your Dharma, Lou, of, of what you fundamentally want, because it sounds like you can have whatever you want. You know, you've already got your retirement. You've already been successful in business. You've already, sounds like, made contributions, you know. So I, I think it kind of comes back to soul and karma of what you're chasing because it's, you know, clearly you can get, you have no problem doing chop wood, carry water. You have no problem investing your money. I think on the business side, you know, which to me, this is always fascinating about Dharmify is a lot of times I find our business problems are spiritual problems and business people don't really want to, they don't want to get there because it's a little too touchy feely, but in your case, you're already a successful businessman. You already know how to manage your money. But now there's a certain feeling, there's a certain anxiety perhaps that, that's, that's underlying and driving you. And so in, in, in this situation, I read it almost as a spiritual problem. Um, and spiritual is a loaded term. I, I just mean really like, what's the karma? What's the soul? What do you, how do you really want to feel? Because I, I think when, I think if you were to, if you were to make Dharma to be like, Lou's going to wake up in the morning and feel like king of the motherfucking universe. <laughs> I think you would do that. Um, so, so anyway, that, that's just how I'm reading what I, the very little that I know of you. Um, yeah. And so I hope that's helpful <laughs> on ultimately. Um, does it, am I making any sense guys? Am I making any sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's an exercise. What are some examples of what you mean by um, investing to make this real? Uh, I know you said cut out some of the extraneous expenses, you know, invest in your dharma. Um, yeah. Is that your main um, point or do you have some more to say about that? Yeah. So in your case, uh, Charles, you're already, you're doing the work, okay? You're doing the work and you're making these connections to people. You're getting people to your webinar. So your step two would be like Facebook ads for your webinar, okay? You've already got a method going now. You're already putting in the labor. If you, start, if you have something that's working now, how you turbocharge it is you invest money into it. Now you blow it up. You already have people that know, like, and trust you. You clearly have something good going here. But if you're not investing money to make this bigger, then you're just, you're just, you're, you're, you're bootstrapping it and bootstrapping it is not how things grow fast. Okay. That, that's, that we know things grow fast when you figure out a method and then you pour diesel on the fire and diesel on the fire is money. Is, is that, is that helpful? Yeah, uh, what a coincidence, Jim, um, that that's what we're discussing behind the scenes with Freedom Hub, right, Jim? Yep, right right on the money, uh, exactly. We're talking about growing this and bringing more people in so we can better serve the community and people like yourself, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so so what the Dharmafi shows us is like, okay, we're working super hard, but we're not investing. Ooh, now we know that's a mistake. Either, either we're doing the wrong work or we should just pour the diesel on and let's blow this thing up. Yeah. So true. Um, can we go to the next, can we go to the last step? Okay. Yep. Um, okay, so good is blessing. Okay. Uh, good is blessing uh, comes from Gurnanic. Um, and Gurnanic writes this poem. Gurnanic uh, was born 1469, uh, lived in North India, now, now modern day Pakistan. And he writes this poem uh, and, and he's describing facets of God. 
And in his description of the facets of God are all of these like aspirational qualities that that exist in the human that like we can see each other as one, we can speak truth to each other, we can transcend our own fear, we can become self-illumined through our knowledge and our practices. At the end of the poem, though, he, he writes, mm. but there's still good as blessing. There's still that little bit of, and I interpret it as little bit of luck, little bit of alignment, little bit of, of uh, doing it the right way a little bit of dharma that has to happen for 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 your success and i, I like i kind of just stumbled through this like frankly like before when i started there was only five components to it and then i would do it in my journal book and then maybe four years ago i added another one and then two years ago three years ago i was, I was like man i'm missing guru's blessing man i'm not getting lucky enough so i broke guru's blessing down to three parts okay and the first one is your guide, your teacher, your mentor, who, wh whatever, wh that person who has already done what you are trying to do. Who's that person? Because again, if you're bootstrapping this, then you're trying to reinvent the wheel. You're trying to, people have already built, you know, the thing that you're trying to do. And if you can find that person who will help you and guide you, again, you're turbocharging your, your chance for success. Okay. So that's, that's number one. Um, what's, what's up, Linda? Oh, did you have a question? Your hand went up. Linda. When you, can you finish, I have a question for you. Uh, almost, almost. Okay. Yeah. Give me, give, Yeah. Okay, let me let me let me introduce. Okay, so let me introduce this and then I'm done and then and then fire away. Okay, Linda. Okay, so part one of Guru's blessing is is the guide. Part two is the avatar. Okay. In in your case, uh um Jim and 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 Charles, you, you have a certain archetype of person that you're trying to promote to. Okay. Whatever, whatever those specs are you know, what their income level is, what their, what they do for work, uh, what their relationship status is, uh, perhaps their political leanings of, of their political party, uh, uh, perhaps their, um, you know, physical health challenges, whatever it is. Okay. That would be avatar. And then C, which is the last one, uh, is the names of the people that benefit from you living Dharma. Because when you serve uh, a community, when you serve a group of people with clarity, uh, you can ha just have so much more impact on them and your chance of success goes up dramatically. Um, that's, uh, okay, so if this lines up, you're dharma -fied, okay? So I, I think about it as just like, we got this. If this isn't lining up, if vision is too high, chop wood carry water is too low, if 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 I'm not resolving my core fundamental feelings, if I'm not solving problems, if I don't have clarity on dharma, if I'm chasing ghosts, all of this causes huge pain and suffering. We get it all into alignment where we feel like we've got a guide. We're, we're in touch with soul. We're, we're 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 chasing soul. We're solving karma. We're 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 creating clear vision. All of a sudden, we start to feel super good about what we're doing. And um, that's how I do my method. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that. And if, it, if, if you're dharmified, do it. And if you're not dharmified, go backwards. So this whole thing is a cycle, okay? You, you go back and you look at soul again, you look at karma, you look at dharma, and then you start to just modify and work with it. Um, that's my pitch. That's what I got for you. Um, um, yeah, please. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, Hargobin, uh, how would you incorporate this fantastic Dharma fight exercise with entrepreneurs who might, you know, gather at Casa Om for a retreat um, to fix these, you know, their soul and, and karma and get on their Dharma? Uh, so the single, like, what made this all come together for me was reading um, Joseph Campbell's Hero of a Thousand Faces. Or, or, is anyone familiar with that? Oh, yeah. Um, so he, talk, he talks about what's called Hero's Journey. And in Hero's Journey, it basically says, you need to leave your comfort zone. You need to go somewhere else. You need to meet someone who has something of wisdom. 
You need to practice those new teachings and then you need to come home and you'll be a different person. And so just the fact that you get out of your comfort zone, you go to a new place, you experience new things, you open yourselves up to new cultures, new words, new beliefs, new practices, new movement, new yoga poses, new meditation, new chanting, new frontier. All of a sudden, you, 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 you're, you're, you're just changing the whole game on yourself. And when you talk about Tony Robbins going on the train ride through Russia, what does he do? He leaves familiar. He goes to a new place. He encounters new cultures, new words, new things. Maybe someone helped him. Maybe someone gave him some guidance. Maybe not. Maybe just nature was his, was his guide. And then he comes back with this great idea. Same thing with Mark Benahoff. He goes out to a new place, goes with his yoga teacher, gets some insight. Obviously, the yoga teacher is not teaching, you know, SQL programming, but, but it doesn't matter. It, it's teaching a new way of thinking so that when he comes home, he's got billion dollar ideas percolating in his mind. And so that's how you do it. It's just the formula. It's not that necessarily you come on one of my retreats and I'm going to be able to solve your problems. I don't know your problems. It's that you're setting yourself up to get a new perspective on your old environment. And that's that's why Hero's Journey is so powerful. And, that, and that's why travel is so powerful. What are some of what are some of your um, attendees at your retreats? What are some of their sayings or feelings after they finished? in terms of helping their business or journey themselves? What kind of feedback have you gotten? Uh, it's all, you know, I get such interesting people on my retreats. <laughs> like, like I, I, you know, I really get a, a wide array of people. And um, yeah. Um, so some people are coming for business challenges, relationship challenges, health challenges, certainly yoga poses. Uh, you know, I teach, you know, very physical yoga asana. Um, I teach meditation. So it, the way that I approach it is like, I'm just trying to fill up the cup with so many healthy habits for people in hopes that, that I can have a positive impact on them. Um, so, you know, all across the board, like some people are excited because they feel physically better. Other people are excited because they get a business breakthrough or a relationship thing. Um, you know, I've had people come that, you know, they really want to like meet a partner and then they'll come back on the next retreat with their partner. And then on the third retreat, they'll come back and they dumped their partner and realized they don't really want a partner. So, so uh, you know, I've been in the business 10 years that I've seen so much. Um, you know, I've really just seen so much, you know, transformation and change um, across the board. It's a great industry. I, I, I love, you know, I, I love um, that this is why people come to see me. Um, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Now, fire away, Linda, please. Okay. Okay. Um, my question, uh, after I give you an example, will be what is the healing potential between uh, yoga and hatha yoga? And I give you an example. After an accident, my right arm was paralyzed for one year. I try everything. Yoga, uh, Pilates, massage, Bengay, everything. So I decided my life will be with a handicapped right arm to write on the computer. I put some support and things like this. And in all my garments, I added pockets to rest my right arm. After 10 minutes of Hatha Yoga with an excellent practitioner, um, all the pain disappeared, all, and my arm was healthy again and uh, like nothing happened that was one example amazing amazing the second i have a son and now he's uh, 37 years old with autism so he has a uh, eye motor coordination problem posture stuttering and all those things after 30 minutes half a yoga with a special teacher from uh, uh, kennedy krieger institute you could bet that 
having for him no stuttering, no posture, everything totally perfect, normal, like even one in a million that he had no, uh, that he could be autistic. You, you understand? So, how you can uh, evaluate yoga that, and meditation, things like this, compared to Hatha yoga? And I want from you uh, an explanation to convince me what's the difference. So I, I don't know where to start with that, Linda. Um, you know, I, I, I would say, um, first of all, that's amazing. Like, I'm so happy that that was your experience um, for, for, both, for both you and your son. Um, the, um... Well, the thing is that my, my arm was, uh, the healing was forever, but my son's healing, in quote, lasted for four days, so only. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know what to add to that. Um, the, you know, in, in a way that would be helpful. So what are you asking me? What, what, yeah, what are you, what are you searching for? Um, because you are uh, related to yoga, you know? Um, I guess I would say, um, yeah, I, I, in your particular situation, um, I just, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to add anything more. You know, it, it's, you had a phenomenal healing experience. Um, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to add to it. Um, I can't explain why that happened. Um, Cause I, I don't, I don't know the situation. Um, so I, I, I really, um, unfortunately, I hope I'm not letting you down, but, but I, I don't know that I have anything to add. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know that I have anything had in in that case. Um, Let me. I'm gonna, just going to cut in because we're running out of time. And Linda, you can come back in a minute and pick this up after we end the recording. Uh, but why don't if you have any final words to wrap this up and maybe tell people how they can reach you? Oh yeah, sure, sure. So uh, my two projects. One is called Casa Ohm. And that's my Mexico project. And the other one is called Casa Ohm Potomac. And that is uh, my West Virginia property. Um, my book, Dharmify, is available on Amazon. That's the easiest way to get it. And um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Um, and um, yeah, and if you want to keep chatting, uh, you can you can always send me a message. I'm, I'm super accessible. Uh, I have a podcast uh, as well. And um, you can get that on Spotify or, or Apple Music. And um, I thank you guys for your time. I, I hope I uh, provided some value um, to, to you guys. And um, I have a retreat uh, coming up October 14th. If uh, you want to come hang out with me in West Virginia, I'd love to show you my property here. And um, wishing you guys just an awesome day. And Where are you close to Romney? What, what part of West Virginia would you? Uh, so I'm in Martinsburg. Martinsburg, uh, okay. Yeah, in between Martinsburg, yeah, outskirts of Martinsburg. Uh, 